Okay, so to kick this lesson off, what I want to do is add some text content to our div in our body. So right here, I'm just gonna add a basic piece of text like hello, save this, and we should see the text appear on the screen on the right, thanks to live server. And actually moving forward uh, for this lesson, we no longer will need to make any edits in VS Code. So I'm going to blow up my Chrome web browser to be full screen, and then I'm gonna open up my developer tools right here. And again, you can reach this by right clicking and selecting inspect, and that will bring up this panel. And rather than the element screen, what I want to navigate to is the console. And as you may or may not be aware, this console is a valid JavaScript execution environment. So we can actually write whatever JavaScript code we want in there, and it's going to be totally valid. So here I am doing a mathematical expression, and here I am creating an array with three numbers. But the beautiful part about this console, this JavaScript execution environment, is that it has full access to the DOM. Now you may have heard the term DOM before, it is short for document object model. But what does that mean? Well, the DOM provides a programmatic way, programmatic simply meaning using JavaScript, it provides a programmatic way to interact with our user interface, to interact with our HTML elements. So we can actually use JavaScript to create HTML elements. We can use JavaScript to remove HTML elements from the interface. We can modify elements. For example, we can add text in a paragraph tag, or we can attach a class to a div. Anything that we can do in HTML, we can actually tell JavaScript to do with code. Now, the way it does so is obviously going to be a little bit different because JavaScript doesn't understand the idea of a visual interface like we do. Like we understand the screen and it has a white background and black text. JavaScript doesn't have eyesight like we do. All it has is uh, constructs like objects, like arrays and things like that. So the DOM is effectively trying to represent a web page in JavaScript constructs. So instead of, for example, our visual way of interpreting an H1 as a header, in the DOM, an H1 will be represented as a JavaScript object. It will know that it is an H1. It might have, for example, a property that represents the text that's going to be displayed within it, and it might have a property to represent the classes that are attached to it, etc. Imagine that we had no eyesight and we had to explain to a computer what a web page consisted of. Well, in order to do that, we could totally use JavaScript, but we have to find a way to represent those visual concepts in things like JavaScript objects. And that's all that the DOM is. It's basically a collection of objects uh, with similar properties and methods, just like we have in regular JavaScript, except those properties and methods are dedicated to building user interfaces in our browser. In fact, JavaScript originated as a language in the browser specifically for these kinds of operations, for interacting with visual elements, creating them, removing them, swapping them, etc. All right. So in this console, we're going to have access to automatically predefined constants that are going to represent certain objects that are just available here for us to use in browser. One example of those is document. So if I type the word document and just print it out, we're going to get this kind of visual output that may not necessarily reflect the truth of what's going on here. The document uh, visually represents the entire web page. It represents the entire page that is loaded in the browser and uh, from, a, from a kind of contextual explanation. But the document is also at its core a basic JavaScript object. And like any object in JavaScript, it has properties and methods. One method that is available on the document object is called getElementById. And you'll notice that I'm writing this method name out the exact same way I would if I was writing JavaScript in a plain JS file, because it's no different. Document is a valid JavaScript object with its own methods. Again, this object is uh, especially made for interacting with the uh, interface. So in this case, the getElementById method, much like its name suggests, accepts a string with a given ID, and it's going to query the user interface, or in other words, search the user interface for the HTML element that has that ID. So for example, right here in our elements, we know that we have a div with an ID of root. So in our console, we can say, document object, you have this method called getElementById. I'm going to give you a string representing the ID that I want you to search for. Go and find the element on the page that has an ID of root. And when I 
get a result here. It's going to look like HTML, and when I highlight this output, it's going to select that div, but actually this is also a valid JavaScript object. The technical name for this type of object in the context of the browser is called a node, and a node typically represents some kind of element on the page. So you're going to have a node to represent an H1, a div, but you can also have a node to represent things like a piece of text. And then all that the DOM is, is a combination of nodes nested within each other in a tree structure that form the, the layout of a web page. So because I know that I'm getting back an object here, I can actually assign this object to a JavaScript constant. So what I can do is bring this line back, and then I'm going to assign it to a constant, and I'm going to call that root element. The name is totally up to us. It's just to show that we're, we're not assigning just a piece of text here or HTML. In JavaScript land, this is actually a valid object that represents the DOM node for the div, and I'm assigning that to a const called root element. And the benefit of that, of course, is now we have an object in root element, and we can find out all kinds of things about it by querying its properties or invoking methods on it. Once again, there's no difference really between an object like this and an object that we declare in a JavaScript file with curly braces. The only thing here is that this object, all these objects are predefined by the browser and are designed and implemented to work with the user interface. So the document object model, if you think about what those words mean, a model is just a way to represent something. It's a way to represent the document, i.e. the web page, as a collection of objects. So document object model. It's a very kind of academic term, but it's, it's actually kind of fitting. It's a way, it's a construct, it's a model to represent the web document, the web page in front of us, as a collection of JavaScript objects, right? So on root element, for example, here are two properties that we have access to. One of them is text content, and that property is going to give us the nested text that we visually see inside that div, right? We can see it right here, and we can also see it nested right here, hello, right? And so we are not doing anything to the web page yet. We are querying, but you can see that this JavaScript object has a property that will tell us that piece of information. Another available property on this type of node object is ID. And as you might guess, it's going to get us the value that is attached to the ID attribute on the HTML element. So for us, it's, it's going to be root, right? That makes sense. That's the exact same thing that we saw right here. Now, the beautiful part about this design is we can actually use uh, JavaScript not just to read information, but also to write information, to add information, which will affect the visual output and the structural semantic logic of the document. So for example, our div right now, our div with an ID of root has no class attribute. And that class is available via a property called class name. Notice it's the exact same attribute we use in React. And that's, by the way, not a coincidence. The React team chose class name uh, as an attachment in JSX because of this browser's native API. This is the actual name or uh, the, the property name that is attached to every node in the browser uh, to represent the classes that are attached to it. So if I find out the current value of this property on this object, it's an empty string, which makes sense because we have no uh, class uh, added to this uh, DOM node in our DOM. But what we can do is, just like we can overwrite properties on any plain JavaScript object, we can also overwrite properties on this valid JavaScript object in our console. So if I take root element class name and I provide an equal sign, I can assign a new value to this property. And let's say I'm going to do fancy space centered. So what I'm emulating here is the addition of two CSS classes. One is called fancy, the next one is called centered. Now there's no styles that we have attached to these classes, so we're not gonna see any difference in a visual output yet. However, notice that we have modified this object right here in our console, and let's take a look at what happened in our elements inspector. Right here, you'll notice on our div, we now have the class added, and it has those exact two class names that we specified as strings, fancy centered. Once again, we don't have any styles associated with a fancy class or a centered class. That, uh, that's why we're not seeing any visual difference. But the key takeaway here is using JavaScript, we were able to manipulate this element, uh, this visual element using programming, right? Using code. We simply accessed the root element, which is an object representing the div with an ID of root. And using properties and basic traditional JavaScript, 
we were able to modify both read and write its nested properties, right? So all of these operations existed long before React did, uh, but it might be a little bit of, of, of news to you, actually. You can actually be working with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for years and not know the kind of behind the scenes uh, mechanics of how your browser works, that your browser actually represents everything on screen as valid JavaScript objects that we can interact with and modify and customize. So we can do just about anything that we can in HTML, such as creating an element, removing an element, modifying element attributes, et cetera, using code, using JavaScript within the browser. We can accomplish all these things. And that starts to kind of pave the way for realizing, wait a minute, if I have all the benefits of code in constructing user interfaces, I can use some of the features of code, such as iteration, right? Such as automation to much more quickly be able to create interfaces compared to manually typing out things like HTML elements and, and CSS styles, et cetera, right? We're getting all the benefits of coding because HTML and CSS technically aren't coding languages, right? They don't have the concept of variables. They don't have the concept of for loops or storing multiple things in an array. Here, we have all of that functionality. We can create variables to store our DOM nodes. We can put our DOM nodes in an array. We can iterate over every DOM node, for example, and attach the same class name to each one. That's totally possible because we have the benefits given to us by a programming language, but now it's optimized to work specifically with the user interface in our browser. That's the document object model in a nutshell. All right, so this is an example of how we can query elements. In the very next lesson, we're gonna see how we can use uh, this document API to create an element in our interface. So I'll see you there.